All right, we're going to do the three AC to coil here. We'll find the one first. It's always fun sometimes to find. Sixteen is my new tool. See how that works. Okay, here's a heat of coil kit. So it basically consists of a, a tap, a bunch of different heat of coils of different lengths. I'm going to pick the one I want to use. If I don't have the one I want, I make it by clip, clip, clip. I forgot what it is. Okay, it looks like we use an X drill because it's marked on the container. Dad marks these containers. Anyone know what year the kit's from? It comes in a plastic container. That's how it is. Must be an old one. Okay, key drill. Ah, the one we're missing. Great. Three, three, two. I think we'd have a key drill. Yeah, get the old kit out. It'll have one in there. Q. Right there. Alright, so that goes in there. Knocks out the threads. I don't know what that's going to knock out. It's already that size. That's not a good sign. Yeah. That means that's bigger than 3 8. So they stripped out 7 16. Jeez. That's two sides bigger in stock already. Wonderful. There's a 3 8. Yeah. Oh, that's not a Q drill, you dumbass. That's an X drill. Q is 5 16. Hey, nobody said I did it wrong yet. Who's going to be first to make a comment? The dumbass can't read. Alright, X drill. X drill, where's X at? Yeah, I have that. Dumbasses around here. It's hard to get good help telling them. That'll be a law against them. All right, I'm gonna get a drill chuck in our mill. Go over here and butcher it over here. Hurt ourselves. How fast are we going? Ooh, way fast. She's slow down over there. There we go. If you go too deep and hit oil, you get a problem. Feel it hitting the bottom of the hole, don't keep drilling. Stop. Didn't line up very good, that's why it chattered when I went in. Alright. Okay, we are done with the X drill. Cutting oil. That's sun and hone oil. Geez, I wonder where I got that from. Where's the sun and hone around here? Hmm, I wonder. Trick question, huh? 
Okay, this is a, not quite a bottoming tab, but close to it. Now, if you use your milling machine as a topping tool, it pulls it very nice and straight. That's a good thing. Catch that right there. That's a good speed. See, it's straight. That's a plus. Tap handle. I like this better than a T handle. Yeah. And then one turn we stopped. Good thing I had the right coast speed there. Huh? Oh, yeah, it appears to be tapped all the way down. Screeching noise in my ears for some reason. I don't know how that happens. Alright. Appears this tap has been modified for a bottoming tap. So we can put it in now. That's what you do with your bad taps. You turn them into different tools. That should be good for one more turn. That's it. I got a good two turns there. Maybe two and a half. Means I can use a longer helical now. Okay, now you get to guess how deep the helical you can put in the hole is. Here's to be pretty deep. So we have the normal one. We have the longer one. See a difference? That's probably one diameter, or a little bit over one. That's probably one and a half diameters. The diamond is a diamond length of the bolt. There's a little stubby one right there. That's probably one diameter. That's a little bit over. That's a little bit more. And then you get the two diameters are really long. And you got 2.5 diameter and 3 diameter. That's your normal dimensions. Alright, so obviously that would work. Now you can count how many threads are in there. It looks like about nine at least. That should work. That, I'd like to use, probably will not work. It'll be close to working though. Probably not quite make it all the way. But we can try. Now when you put these in, they grow, they get, they compress, so they get longer. They'll gain a whole, you'll gain a whole heel coil, a whole length, or a whole coil, whatever you want to call it. So this right now is about nine, ten, that's probably ten threads long. Now you can't count the very bottom one, but you can count most of them. There's at least eight or nine in there. <sighs> Excuse me. This one here would obviously fit really, really well with no problem. This one here would give more area to strip out. Obviously he likes to strip things out. See, these are 5 16 helicoil, and this one here is 3 eighths now. Alright, uh, let's see. Do we want to go on that one all in? I don't think this will fit. So we're going to make it easy. We'll put this one there. I can take this one and cut off one or two helicoils, and that would be like one more than this. It's not worth the effort. So now this is the old tool for putting it in. There's a tang down there in the helicoil. 
disengage the tang and pushes it in. The winder, which is this tool, compresses it and goes in the slot that turns it. But if this is threaded in here, so it sticks it in. Alright, so let's put this over to here where we can see better. Come in this direction. Okay. So this one here, if you look up in there, it's threaded right there in the tip. So you drop your heat coil in there, slide it in the hole, and you rotate it until it goes in. out the other end it compresses it so it goes into the hole here easier just line it up and wind your own in this is the production way of doing things you want to make sure you go at least one half turn in past what you need up to one turn in that way when they compress it it won't have a problem. So that's a good half a turn in. You can see there's only like one thread to the bottom extra way down in there. I don't know if you can see it. I could probably only gain like one turn. It wasn't worth all the work. Okay, I just take this and push the tang down with this. You hit on the base of the tang. Go like that. The tang should break off cleanly. Always make sure you find your tang. You don't want these inside of your motor. Make sure they wind up in the trash can, not laying on your bench. Okay, so that now is tangless. It's installed. I'm going to file across that, make sure there's no burrs on there. Just down that one of those right here. There you go. Precision. There you go, now you can see better. Alright, so now it's in there. Final test is put a bolt in there, one bolt, make sure it works. Should go all the way to the bottom of the hole. It's a hard stop, it's bottomed out. Now if you put the helicoil in there and it hits in the bottom of the thread, and it compresses the helicoil, the bolt will lock up before it gets to the bottom. And that's what starts tearing up things, because it will actually tear up the end of the bolt, and you try to pull it out, it screws the helicoil up, you have all kinds of problems. It screws up the bolt and it tears up the whole helicoil. If the helicoil doesn't come out, it tears up the helicoil. But when it comes out, the helicoil is expanding real big, so it tears up the hole that you just made. So it pretty much screws up everything. That's why you want to make sure you don't go all the way down. It's also why I put a bottoming tap in there to get a clean thread to the bottom. Alright, that's it for now. I'll clean this up and we'll be back.